you very much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. And today I'm going to talk to you about the HP foot and HP needle plate. Now again, Joe will uh, share with me your comments and questions that I'll try to answer during the live, but if not, then I can answer them right afterward as well. And uh, again, this will be stored in our the Genome Canada stories for the next 24 hours. So then you can always tune in later or uh, view this on the Genome Life YouTube channel. The video will be posted in the next uh, day or two, a couple of days, maybe even by next week, given it is Friday. And I know Aaron's super busy, so maybe look for it next week. Uh, you know, here in Canada, Monday is a holiday. It's Victoria Day, so we don't want her... Aaron working on the holiday, so again, maybe next week check for this video, but always a good time to uh, review it later. So today we're talking about the HP needle plate and foot. Now this first came out a few years ago with the 9400, and then it was on the 6700, and then uh, version 3 of the Memorycraft 15000, the quilt maker, that had the HP needle plate and foot. Now, those of us that have version one or version two of the 15,000, I have a version two that I bought about ooh, five or six years ago. So I was able to then take the machine to the dealer and they were going to do an update of the firmware, which is the uh, computer memory and uh, such of the machine. So the dealer was going to do the update to then update it to version three quilt maker. But then we could also pay for an additional upgrade kit, which then had the additional presser feet and the HP noodle plate and HP foot to again, take our version one or two of the 15,000 up to that version three quilt maker. So that was available, still available as well. So you can double check with your Janome dealer. So that's how we got HP needle plate and foot for those machines. And then later machines like the 9450 and then the fabulous Continental M7 here have the HP needle plate and foot. So now we have three needle plates for Janome. I've got my regular zigzag still on the machine. I've got a straight stitch needle plate that the machine came with. Now, if your machine does not have a straight stitch needle plate, perhaps it's available uh, again, uh, check with your Janome dealer. I love using the straight stitch noodle plate when I'm uh, piecing or certainly when I'm um, on my 15,000. I have embroidery capabilities, uh, so I like using my straight stitch noodle plate when I embroider. Also, when I do free motion quilting and ruler work. Now, the M7 does not have any um, embroidery, <laughs> so but I can use my straight stitch noodle plate again for ruler work or free motion quilting. Uh, and piecing. So that works great. So it looks similar to the HP plate, but instead of a central hole like our straight stitch needle plate has, the HP needle plate has its hole oriented to the left of center. So here would be center and then to the left. So the HP needle plate only has one hole to the left. And conveniently, Janome has labeled it HP. And even the little bobbin cover here is also labeled HP. So it's really good that they've, again, tried to think of everything. So then we can see at a glance which is which. The nice thing is when I clip this into my machine, which I will in a moment, uh, the machine thinks for me. So it grays out all the other stitches that are not compatible with this plate. And the same is true of the straight stitch needle plate. When I snap that in, again, all the other stitches will be grayed out. So the machine thinks for me. So I love that. So with our HP needle plate, we're going to use our special HP, HP whoops, <laughs> little foot. Now, maybe you'll be able to see, I'll try to hold this steady, that where my little hole is, my foot is going to line up the center of that foot will be in that hole there. And it is over four of our seven feed dogs. Now our feed dogs have uh, seven points. So there's two here in the front, there's one on each side, and then there's three in the back. And then my HP foot is gonna go over four of them, directly over four of them. So that's why it feeds so well. Now HP stands for high performance. So it's very akin to industrial 
machines. And I say that uh, simply because when I studied fashion design at Sheridan College, um, do you know this month is 25 years that I graduated college? I can't believe it. <laughs> Where has the time gone? But when I studied fashion design as uh, sewing on industrial machines, we had little skinny feet like this. And again, perfect quarter of an inch. So this is again very akin to that. Our machines are not industrial, but they're very akin to that. And particularly at high speeds, this is very helpful. Um, our 16 or our 6700, for example, stitches at 1200 stitches a minute. The Continental M7 here stitches at 1300 stitches. So really super heavy duty super fast. So this is where this skinny foot uh, comes into play. It lines up over four of our feed dogs. Now you may wonder what's this extra little hole then here to the side. Now this is again a safety precaution. Janome thinks of everything. If you leave your foot on your machine and turn it off and then go to turn it on again, the needle is going to swing over to the center needle position, which is where that little hole is. And then the foot is going to slightly cycle up and down and the needle eye will go right through that hole in the foot. So again, if that hole wasn't there, the needle would hit that foot and do some damage. But again, Janome tries to think of everything, so that's why that little, uh, little hole in the foot is there. Now there's some very convenient markings on our foot as well. So up here at this notch is where my needle is. And directly above that, a quarter of an inch away, is another set of notches. So if I need to stop sewing um, and pivot my fabric, for example, I would use my uh, needle down feature, my auto pivot feature if I have it, and then I would drop my needle there and the edge of my fabric would be right here. So then I know exactly this is a quarter of an inch, so then I can lift up my foot and pivot. So really handy, which I'll show you in just a minute. And now this foot as well, uh, we would take off our regular foot holder when we use this foot. It's got its own built-in foot holder. The foot can move, uh, you know, again, going up uh, over bulky side seams, for example, but it does not move left and right. It's affixed very securely there. So again, great for accuracy. We want that perfect quarter of an inch, but then also again for high speed sewing. Now I brought this foot out so you could compare. You won't be able to interchange them, so please don't get confused, but this foot here is on my HD9. Uh, which is our, uh, it stitches at 1600 stitches per minute, so super fast. And again, very um, industrial-like, very heavy duty. And again, that skinny, it looks so similar, that same skinny, perfect quarter of an inch. This is great profile uh, to go around curves uh, for top stitching, uh, which I have an example of here. Now, when we're sewing garments, very often we're doing uh, edge stitching is about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric. But for top stitching is typically done about a quarter of an inch. As I line my foot up there, that's a perfect quarter. And you know, some people don't like having the, using the quarter of an inch foot, one of our feet have, or some of our feet have guides on the side. And you know, people really don't like having that guide in the way. So this is uh, the nice thing about using this HP foot. There's no guide. You just run your fabric up against the side of the foot and works really well, really accurate. Now, because this foot is over those feed dogs directly, it feeds the fabric beautifully. Uh, I'll show you this beautiful girl. <laughs> uh, she's all ready for the holiday weekend here. Uh, now, when would you use this foot? Talk about really skinny, small <laughs> seam allowances. I don't know if you'll be able to see because of this dark fabric, but this dress um, tapers from wider here at the back and then it slowly tapers down. So by the time I get here to her thighs and going down to her knees, my seams are only about an eighth of an inch away from each other. So that's a lot of little uh, skinny thing. You can see there's no wiggle room in this dress. So when you're sewing small little miniatures, doll clothes, things like that, having this little foot definitely helped getting into those tight areas. Uh, and again, around curves is beautifully. Um, 
on these bags, uh, speaking of heavy duty, and again, feeding so well, this foot being metal, very slick. So I was able to sew these vinyl um, cosmetic bags, travel bags, very easily. Beautiful top stitching, a quarter of an inch away. Uh, these remind me of Russian dolls because, you know, they all just, one just fits into the other. But again, beautiful top stitching around very simply and easily. It fed, the, the vinyl fed through beautifully. So no problems there. But I can also use, so that, oh, so that's great for piecing. But then I can also use this fabulous new addition. This is our HP2 AccuFeed Flex Professional Grade Foot. Now this comes with the Continental M7 and also comes with the 9450, but it is available in a uh, optional separate blister pack. Again, check with your Janome dealer and see then uh, that they can order one for you. So I could use... Lorendo asked, said that the HP feet seems more like a scant quarter or are they a true quarter inch? Well, yes, and I will get to that whole scant in just a moment um because yes it's really per it's like the perfect perfect quarter and but airing yes more on the scant side and i'll show that in just a minute when i snap it on the plate um said that her daughter wants to know if she could have your beautiful barbie oh yes i know isn't she gorgeous i love it so yeah we'll talk <laughs> uh or you can easily sew one yourself using this foot that's exactly what i used was this foot um, so this HP2 foot is available for those machines that are uh, HP compatible. So again, the 6700, the 9400, uh, 15,000 uh, quilt maker, or version 1 or 2, 15,000, if they've been updated, could use this HP2 foot. Now, this looks very similar. Some people uh, ask me on Facebook, oh, I already have that. And I always say, like, double check on the side of the foot, it says HP2. And again, is that very skinny profile. Uh, they sometimes are confused with this as the single narrow uh, foot holder, AccuFeed Flex foot holder that comes with some of the machines. Uh, its uh, standard foot is the VD foot, but then it can also use the ED foot, which is the zipper foot. So people think, oh, well, that's the same as the HP, right? And it's like, well, no, actually it isn't. Uh, you may be able to see Maybe I should set these down, would be easier. The HP2 foot is just a little bit more narrow. Uh, these will not be interchangeable. I tried, <laughs> they're not. Uh, now I've used this VD foot in the past for a quarter of an inch and it was great, but this HP2 foot is again, just that little bit more uh, scant, that it, it works out just beautifully. And I'll show you some examples of the quilting in just a second. So that works out really good. So it again, Janome labels everything so we're not confused. Now, when you mount this on your machine, all of our AccuFeed Flex feet have this little hook at the back. And again, some people message me and say, oh, my foot's not working. Um, there is a bar in the back of your foot. If it's AccuFeed Flex compatible, you'll have this little bar at the back. And this is where that hook goes into. It clips onto that bar, which is the upper feeding mechanism of your machine. So this AccuFeed Flex foot, you may be able to see as it's going on, I always call it, it's like a walking foot on steroids because it's like super accurate. And this is the upper feed dogs that are in play. So we've got the four feed dogs for the AccuFeed or for the HP feet have four feed dogs underneath. And now I've got feed dogs on top, but I need to click this little hook in the back. So I like to hold, I know my hand may be in the way, but I like to hold it at the back, um, that little hook up against that clip as I tighten my thumb screw. Because if you just tighten it by the thumb screw, sometimes that little hook can uh, just pop off if the thumb screw is not exactly square. So I like to hold it against the back, tighten up the thumb screw, and definitely use the screwdriver that comes with the machine. Uh, I learned the hard way thinking, ooh, I'm a big, strong man. I can tighten that screw myself. And oh no, because uh, many of our machines um, stitch at such high speeds, and I like sewing at high speeds, uh, then yeah, my foot actually fell off. So don't be doing that. So uh, I'm going to now put on my HP needle plate. So on our Continental M7, I need to lock the machine. 
and then I can touch the screen here and it just pops up all on its own. It's so fantastic. Uh, there is my HP plate. There is a magnet in this needle plate, so it just holds it in place. I don't need a screwdriver, which is amazing. Now, again, on our 15,000, some of our other machines, uh, at the front bed of your machine, there's the little uh, notch to pop off your needle plate, or in the 6700, it's at the side of the bed, and that'll pop up your needle plate to easily change it. So now, when I've changed it to the HP plate, you hopefully can see up here at the top, then it's got my HP foot. And my needle has swung all the way over here to the left. It was right here to the center, but now it has swung over to the left. So this is good, again, for that perfect uh, quarter, that scant quarter. So when I line up my fabric, our needle plates are patented, did you know? <laughs> and what's the wonderful thing about it, I've got a quarter of an inch line here, which will line up with one of the markings of my HP foot. There is where my needle is. Then I've got another quarter of an inch line here. So then that will again help me line up my fabric, especially when I'm pivoting. But we also have quarter of, uh, or quarter inch markings uh, vertically. So that's pretty much in line with this set of feed dogs here. So there's a quarter of an inch up here. There's one on the uh, bobbin cover. There's another on the bobbin cover. And there's another here on the needle plate. So if they are a little hard to see, you know, sometimes there's a lot going on with the lighting and your eyes, especially if you're tired. Uh, I just say take a little piece of painter's tape. This is like the green painter's tape, low tack. And just again to help make it easier to see that these are the markings you want to pay attention to. These are the feed dogs that are going to be in play when we use the HP foot. Those feed dogs aren't going to be in play at all. Uh, I suppose I could rip off my tape a little bit more though so I can still see my markings uh, as well. I can still take those advantage of those. I just want to put this tape where my markings. So just so it helps me center my eyes, I guess, on that marking. So when I have my fabric down though, as far as this scant quarter of an inch, you know, it's funny when you, I talk to anyone who's like an engineer and they uh, argue with me, there's no such thing as a quarter of an inch, but we filters know, oh yes, there is. And it really is just about uh, like one thread or two. And where that really comes into play, when I'm doing my piecing, then each of these seams as I go along my quilt, if I have this one block, but I've got multiple blocks across my quilt, then each of these seams, you know, takes up a little um, room, not only with the thread, uh, but as I fold my fabric, you're losing a little bit by the uh, thickness of the thread you use, and again, by the fold of the fabric. So the more seams you have in your block and in your quilt, this is where using that really perfect quarter, that little scant quarter, really makes a difference. So this block needed to be six and a half inches. So I used this HP2 AccuFeed Flex foot, and this is a perfect six and a half inches. I was so impressed. So this has become my new favorite quarter of an inch piecing foot. Or this would be a close second, but I love having that AccuFeed. So back to our scant quarter. So when I drop my foot here, I've got my fabric lined up against my guides. It's right at the edge of the foot. If I need it to be just that thread less or maybe two threads less, then I just slightly back off my fabric like just a tiny bit. And then that way I know it's going to be that little perfect scant quarter. So then by the time I press my fabric over, it's going to be the exact measurement I want. So the, the good thing is do a bunch of samples and play around with it because a lot of if it's a quarter or a scant quarter, um, a lot has to do with your pressing as well. And, and thread. Uh, I'm using our um, iris. Uh, this is our polyester um, thread, the iris thread that I use for embroidery, but there's also an iris cotton quilting thread. So that's what I typically use a piece with. Um, so again, doesn't really take up a lot of room. Or we also have our Madeira Katana thread that I also like. 
Uh, now, both of those are available from your Genomi dealer. Uh, Genomi Canada is a distributor of Madeira and Iris threads. So contact your dealer and see if they have them for you. So that makes a perfect, um, again, scant quarter. But because I've got my uh, AccuFeed Flex foot on here, I need to go up to my machine and I can activate the AccuFeed uh, with the Continental M7. Uh, I can Accu um, activate it in two ways, one of two ways. So I would go up here to the top and then click this little, uh, there's three triangles and then two lines. So that's gonna activate the upper feed of that foot. So it's just gonna ask me, make sure proper is on. Yes, it is, and now it's yellow. So then now it has changed, the screen has changed to the HP two foot. Now I know I've got the AccuFeed working for me and I can make some adjustments over here at the side, um, this window. Normally it will look like this when you first plug in your, uh, or put on your plate. And again, all the other stitches I can't use are grayed out. So I just have these straight stitches or then the straight stitches, uh, the P for piecing is the one I would use with that really tiny 1.8 um, stitch. But if I go in my little triangle here, this is how I can get to my settings. And this last setting here is for the AccuFeed. On our 15,000, for example, we have a little dial off to the side is where we would um, adjust for the AccuFeed. But here I can do it now on the screen. So I can uh, activate, my, or activate my AccuFeed this way, or I can go to my, this is my functions button, the little circle with the line through it. So I can click on that and then it says uh, manual dual feed settings. Right now it's off, so I can click it on. It's gonna cancel my AccuFeed from the other screen. And now I have the adjustment here. So I can adjust this, five is the average setting. So I can turn that up if I need it to feed more up at the top or if I need it to feed less, I can turn it up or down. And again, five is average. Do it on the 9400 as well. Uh, well, yes, as far as you'll, you'll activate your AccuFeed, I'll need to turn that off. You can activate your AccuFeed this way on your 9400, but you don't have this function button here. This is for the uh, Continental M7 having this adjustment of the manual uh, dual feed setting in the functions menu is just for the Continental M7. Uh, it actually has a separate motor. This machine has a separate motor for the AccuFeed. So uh, I can adjust it here or again, I'll turn it off um, is what I usually do because if I turn it on for manual feed there, all my stitches that I'm able to use are now going to be AccuFeed compatible. So if I turn it off though, and go back to my other screen and activate my AccuFeed here, then I can adjust it based on the stitch that I use. So it's only applying the AccuFeed to this stitch. And then again, I can just turn it off if I'm just gonna use my regular AccuFeed foot there. So it's a very cool thing to do. Uh, I mentioned quilting, so I loved quilting through all layers, or again, I use that foot for piecing. So here, my beautiful quarter of an inch, all I did was just run the foot back uh, every which way. So a quarter of an inch quilting through all layers of that placemat. Uh, you can also use your quilting bar that comes with many of our machines, or it's also available in a separate blister pack that just easily goes through the side of the HP foot, or now that uh, the quilting guide bar comes with the machine, or we also have these long quilting guide bar sets as well that are available again from your dealer. Now these people like because there is a left and a right. So there's a left bar and a right bar. So depending on how you orient your fabric, you've got a guide for each side and uh, given I'm a big Star Wars fan, I always think this looks like an X-Wing fighter to me. So I think that's really cute. Uh, but yes, a great way to do your accurate quilting. Uh, oh, and I want to mention one last thing as far as the uh, stitches that I'm here. At the very, if you want to scroll along uh, the very end screen here, stitch number five is, they're known as sculpture stitches. 
but uh, this is the stitch I would use for our hand look quilting. Now, we've written many, many blog posts about hand look quilting, so you can go to Janome Life blog. Uh, it's janomelife.wordpress.com and lots of information on how to do this hand look quilting, but it's very cool. So I would use this. Peterson wants to know when should you use the non AccuFeed HP foot? Non AccuFeed. Oh, well, again, I would use it just for regular, I mean, regular piecing totally would work. Uh, again, my top stitching here, I don't really need the AccuFeed uh, on this because I'm not piecing like two pieces together. I'm, I'm just doing my top stitching over it. So I don't need the upper feed dogs in this case. So this is when I would use that. Uh, on this little girl here, uh, I used um, just the regular one. Uh, my pieces fit together lengthwise perfectly. Uh, it was just widthwise that they were skinny. Uh, and in fact, I, I used on here because my vinyl fed so evenly, I, I didn't need to use the AccuFeed Flex for this one either. Uh, I certainly could if I found well, uh, and again, this is where you just experiment. If I was stitching my vinyl and it's like, oh, it's not really feeding so well, then I would either maybe lengthen my stitch, give that a try. If it's still, oh, it's not feeding so well, that's when I would uh, switch to the HP AccuFeed Flex Foot to give me that little more oomph to get it going. So very helpful. So again, back to our Accu or back to our hand look uh, quilting stitch. Go to your Janome Life blog. Find out all about how to do this. But the the secret behind this uh, hand look quilting is one of the secrets is using this blue dot bobbin holder. And I just wanted to show this because uh, I just got this. I haven't even opened it. <laughs> but there is a little blue dot. I hope you can see. Uh, that this is what is helpful to use for that hand look quilting and now it is available for the Continental M7. It needs its own blue dot bobbin holder uh, because of the optical thread sensor that's in the bobbin area in order to, it's like a low bobbin sensor, uh, but the optical thread sensor portion of it is um, brand new to the Continental M7 so that's why it needed its own blue dot bobbin holder. So you would use this for your hand look quilting, you would use this for free motion quilting, uh, ruler quilting, which is basically free motion. Uh, that's when I love using this blue dot bobbin holder, again now available for Continental M7. The blue dot bobbin holder that I would use in my 15,000, for example, because it's embroidery, uh, I love using it for AccuFill quilting in addition to ruler work and free motion quilting. Uh, because I mentioned AccuFill, I wanted to mention as well that um, next Wednesday, May 20th at 3 p.m., I will be doing Facebook Live with Janome America. So make sure you jump onto Facebook. Their page is the Janome Sewing Machines page. So again, next Wednesday at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be doing uh, AccuFill quilting at Janome America Live. So that's very fun. So, yes, have I talked about everything? There was so much I wanted to share. I think I shared everything. Any questions? Any concerns? Oh, one thing I did before we get to there. While you're on the Janome uh, America Facebook page, Janome Sewing Machines, or go to Instagram, Janome America, uh, these were just posted yesterday. Our Parts and Notions coordinator, Tanya, uh, designed these. I thought these were so cute. These are little coloring pages that you can download and print out. So again, in Canada, we're coming up to Victoria Day long weekend. So you need stuff for the kids to do. They can print these out and color them. There's like a, a word search. And then this one I thought was so adorable of how to thread uh, the needle to connect the needle and the thread together. So this is uh, our little uh, thank you to all those frontline workers who are helping the rest of us stay home and stay safe. Uh, I wanted another shout out to our Janome dealers. You know, they really are working, I think, overtime trying to accommodate all this crazy situation that we're in. So please uh, call your Janome dealer. Um, if you're uncertain if your dealer is open, you can go to our Janome uh, website and up at the top there is uh, go to Janome.ca and up at the top is a tab that says find a dealer and you enter in your province and postal code and then um, you can check your dealer 
and make sure that they're still around by the time this is all over with. So please support them. They do um, curbside pickup and shipping and whatever you, your needs. So yes, any questions, concerns? Um, <clears throat> why do you have to push the fabric forward with the HP two foot before or after it starts to feed through? Well, you've got to push it forward, like to, to get it started. I mean, I, um, I just start. It, um, whoops, I haven't even engaged it yet. Let me engage it. There we go. Uh, I don't really push it forward. I just I just go. Oh, there I'm on that sculpture stitch. I just let it uh, do its thing and really let the machine work for you. Now, sometimes, depending on the thickness of your fabric, if you find, oh, it's not feeding well, then... Um, you may need to leave like the thread tails on, on the back and then just to help give it a little head start or start sewing a little bit further um, down your fabric um, to, to get it going. And does the 9400 have a blue dot bubble case available? It does, yes. Uh, it'll um, be the one with the, the easy set uh, because you've got the easy set bobbin with the little thread cutter at the side. So yes, there is a blue dot bobbin holder that would work in the 15,000 and the 9,400. Um, so yes, contact your Janome dealer. Uh, for those with the M7, again, you want to make sure yours says M7. So it's different. Um, now kind of off topic, but is there a resource available that shows how to clean your machine, especially the bobbin area? Well, of course, I could say you would consult your... Genomi manual, whatever your machine is, always at the back of the manuals, they do list some troubleshooting on how to clean. Uh, and of course, right now I can't find it. But uh, again, they, they always have some troubleshooting on um, how to clean your machine and what to do. Oh, there it is. So on this, it's uh, page 129, for example, on how to clean it. But also, uh, I did... Oh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Is it on Genomi Life uh, blog post? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, my memory. Uh, and I know Miriam on Genomi America uh, recently did a Facebook Live on how to clean the bobbin of your machine as well. So you could go to Facebook to Genomi Sewing Machines page and find Miriam's video. Can you get the HP foot and plate for the S9? Now, I've heard that uh, a lady at one of our shows came up and said that she tried the HP foot on her, uh, I think it was the Indigo uh, S9, the, the newer version of the S9, and she said the HP plate worked on her S9. I've not tried it out myself because I, I don't have an S9 here, so I thought that was very interesting uh, to hear from her. Uh, but again, I would contact your Janome dealer just to make sure. Okay. Is the blue dot bobbin needed for hand quilting stitch or is it optional? Uh, it's preferred to have it because it's uh, the, the, the secret behind our blue dot bobbin holder is that it's low tension. Uh, we've got three bobbin holders. Uh, red is our uh, generic uh, regular one that comes in all the machines. The yellow dot bobbin holder is for embroidery, so that'll be in our, uh, again, 15,000, our 500E, 550E, uh, S9, that are all embroidery machines. Uh, has the yellow dot, and that's a high tension bobbin holder, so that'll pull your bobbin threads to the underside, because you don't want to see that bobbin thread come up on your embroidery, so that's why the high tension is good. The blue dot is low tension, so that means it's not going to pull your needle threads to the top, it's lower tension, but when we're using it with our hand look quilting, what you're actually seeing is, this is the bobbin thread. Now, I use a higher tension in the needle in conjunction with the lower tension of the bobbin, so the needle thread pulls that bobbin thread up to the top, which is what you're seeing here. And then we use uh, invisible thread in the needle, and you can barely see that there's a stitch actually in between those two stitches there. And again, if you want to follow me on the screen, 
This is, again, they're known as sculpture stitches, but it is a triple stitch, basically, that goes back and forth uh, three times, or forward and back three times. Then it takes one stitch in the middle. Now, this one stitch in the middle is this invisible thread, and then this triple stitch is what you're seeing here is actually the bobbin thread. So by having the looser tension of the bobbin and the tighter tension of the needle is, is how this is able to be, or why this is able to be so successful. And again, more information about this handlet quilting is on the Janome Life blog. So lots of good information there. So yes, lovely. Joe's given me the roll up. So thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, I hope that's uh, helped clear up some confusion. Uh, definitely again, check in with your dealers as well. They're a great resource. Uh, also a great resource while I think about it. If you type in Janome Global Site in your browser, so Janome Global Site, there is a downloads tab and then if you click on that then there's a bulletins tab so this is a bulletin that came out uh, when the hp needle plate debuted with the 15,000, for example but this shows you and explains a little more of what i was talking about today so the Janome global site is another good resource for information with these bulletins so thanks very much for joining me. I will see you all at another time. Um, again, make sure you watch Genome America's um, Facebook Live at 3 on uh, May 20th for AccuFill Quilting. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>